Hello, I'm Simon Milne, and today I'm talking to Robin Cadwallader about her new novel, The Anchoress. Robin, welcome. Thank you, lovely to be here. Tell me about The Anchoress. Uh, the Anchoress is the story of Sarah, a 17-year-old girl in the Middle Ages in England, in the 13th century. Uh, Sarah has, has always planned on becoming a nun. She's very devoted to God. But uh, two events happen in her life that make her change her mind. The first one is the death of her younger sister, Emma, uh, whom she loves dearly. And Sarah is devastated when Emma dies. The second one is uh, the proposal of marriage from a local lord and her father who pressures her to marry this man and Sarah does not want to marry. She's afraid of uh, the kind of response, the physical responses that she has to this man, her own sexual desire. And those two events make her decide that she will close herself away and become an anchoress. Uh, and what is an anchoress? She has to um, find herself a patron and she has to get permission from the bishop to enter a cell and she goes into, she, there's, a, there's an enclosure ceremony where the death rites are read over her and then she enters the cell, a stone cell maybe 12 by 12 in the novel it's seven paces by nine. She goes into the cell and the door is nailed, closed behind her. So she was closed in a cell attached to a church? It's attached to a church in the village, yes. And the door was nailed shut? Yes. And she was in a cell in complete darkness or there was, she had some contact with the world? How did people communicate with her? She, she has, she, she's not supposed to look out Custody of the eyes particularly was very important, so she was not supposed to look out, but she did have two windows, one which looked out onto the maid's room, and she had two maids who would look after her daily needs, her um, food and, and cleaning, and another window which looked onto the parlour where uh, people could come for counsel. And there was also a very small opening called a squint in the uh, wall adjoining the church where she could look in and watch Mass being celebrated. And she was there on her own? There was no other people in her life? Well, her maids are very important to her. Uh, there are quite a few village women who come to her for counsel. And uh, there she has a confessor as well. And the two relationships that are probably the most important for her are Anna, who's her, her young maid, who reminds her very much of her own sister. So that unsettles Sarah's sense of having come into the cell to be healed from her grief at her sister's death. She's reminded of that constantly when she sees Anna. And the second one is Ranulf, who is her confessor, who's a scribe from the nearby priory. And Ranulf has been uh, pushed into this role as her confessor. He doesn't uh, really know much about counselling uh, people, and particularly women. He's had very little to do with women. So uh, Ranulf is quite resentful. He's, he's fearful, but he's also resentful that he has to spend his time away from what he loves, which is his books and his, uh, and his writing in his scriptorium at the, at the Priory. And what were the things that really changed the seclusion for her? So there, there, there's quite a bit of conflict between Sarah and, and Ranulf, neither of them likes the other particularly, and that's a relationship that has a profound influence on Sarah. And uh, that's when she, she gradually begins to discover that with all these other influences from outside that she hadn't counted on, her, her life really isn't 
safe or as simple as she had expected. Thank you, Robin.